<laughs> That's a lot of work. Throw a fish back, wasn't it? Yeah. Beautiful red. Ooh, yummy. Sweet, sweet, sweet. There we go. That is a Port O'Connor redfish, as it is. There you go, buddy. Well, as Ozzy Osbourne says, no more tears. Welcome back, guys, to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. It is July 21st, believe it or not, and it's a balmy 85 degrees here in North Texas. This is crazy weather this year. I don't know how to explain it. There is no explaining it. And it's uh, and the rain and all that has had a deep effect on lakes in North Texas. And as you can see from this footage from the uh, Port O'Connor system, the rain did have an effect down there. I was forced to go to the dark side while I was down there. I was down there five calendar days last week. Probably fished for a total of two days due to some friends boat problems and a few other things like that. Um, let me tell you guys, on a micro level, if you are going to Port O'Connor, you need to know before you go. Um, I knew, but we still were locked in to our, uh, our rental agreement. My friend's rental agreement, I rode along with him, CK, good guy, took me along for a ride once again. And um, the week before that, it rained 21 inches right there on Port O'Connor. The sewer system was shut down, they were shutting the water on and off, the actual tap water because of the possible contamination. But uh, we bared down anyway and uh, had to go. Uh, let me just tell you right now that the the area down there in Port O'Connor was devastated, devastated by the freeze. In other words, all the plant life, that uh, the mangrove plant life, the taller plant life in the uh, out in the marshes is dead, just dead as far as the eye can see. And I believe 21 inches of rain plus the dead plant life contributed to the, the discoloration, if you want to call it that. I call it tanning, tanning tanning of the water down there so I was forced unfortunately to go to the dark side and when I go to the dark side it's uh, it's for a couple of reasons one reason is it's too windy and the second reason is I'm having trouble finding the fish but when I go to the dark side I like the equipment over there just as much because that's what I started with was with a uh, spinning rod and man I found the combination that really works well uh, you know, on this video, uh, this cut in here somewhere on um, catching that one fish that I did get on video, um, I mistakenly said I had a 2,000 reel. This is a 2,500 reel. All right, so if you're not into the dark side and you're into fly fishing, you need to like stick your fingers in your ears, okay guys? Stick your fingers in your ears. So for prospecting and salt, 2,500 Florida fishing products. I can't tell you enough about how smooth this reel is, and especially the drag. This is the most expensive reel I've ever owned. Um, uh, spinning reel. Um, and it shows in the drag. Run a 15 pound uh, Florida Fishing Pro braid with a, about a 10 pound, I don't know, probably not enough, 10 pound solid fluoro leader on it. Really, really effective. Um, and that's all mounted to the Waterloo Salinity. This is the Salinity rod. This is the Florida Fishing Products reel. Very nicely balanced um, and just shocking. When we get down in here, it's got plenty of backbone. This is the medium, running the medium. And uh, really an agile rod. It really feels good in your hand. It'll cast a mile. So really great. Of course, you know what I'm throwing down there. And that is mirror lures. I don't know what I do with that mirror lure I have. Let me go see if I can find it real quick. The one I used on this, it was uh, see, I don't keep I don't keep conventional stuff out on the deck. I put it away and hide it. Let me go see if I can find it. This little guy right here, spending twitch, little Wayne, 17 MRL, little Wayne, little Wayne, L I L, little Wayne. 
You know, you gotta love gold, don't you? I mean, you gotta love gold. So that's what I use to catch that redfish. I figure he's about 25 inches long, you know, five pounds or so. Skinny, long and skinny kind of guy. But um, anyway, that was that. So, in conclusion, fishing on the Texas Gulf Coast, fly fishing on the Texas Gulf Coast, you gotta know before you go and don't believe the Chamber of Commerce reports, okay? Don't believe it. That's that. Now, locally in North Texas, we are still struggling to get the water down here. It's still a little bit high. And, uh, you know, I'm out here actually prospecting, looking around, checking my spots for a guiding trip this weekend. And holding my breath. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's what's going on. You know that um, there's a lot of lakes here. The sand bass are on top out here in the evenings for sure. Uh, later in the day and they are deep as well so if you're a sand bass person that can always be done it's always a lot of fun it's kind of blitzy and uh, it's really a blast but um after this week and after this guy trip this week we'll be going to other lakes hopefully within you know a couple hours range and checking those out because we got to get out and get about um, before this country gets shut down shut down again with this virus if you haven't gotten your virus shot, please go get your shot. Not political about it. It's just, uh, it's just we want everybody to survive, not just the fittest. Uh, for some reason. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. You know that I use the TPWD information and scroll that at the end. So tune into that scroll. Um, if you got any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, put those in the in the comments and. Feel free to go to the website www.texasflycaster.com and I'm going to break down in stories and articles in writing the information on Port O'Connor and that includes all the bad stuff. So um, you're going to have to read about it because I don't want to talk about it. It's tough down there in Port O'Connor this week, last week, all last week. Two days of fishing, two redfish. Um, I would say two days cumulatively over four or five days so it was really tough the wind was the wind was down the mosquitoes were carrying us off but anyway i i deviate once again i'm gonna have to start writing scripts thanks for watching guys watch the scroll and you can call me at 940-380-0408 or text for immediate um, response to any questions you might have or if you want to book a trip fly fishing with me here in north texas on my technical polling skiff how do you like it? It's beautiful, isn't it? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Some days you got to go conventional. And some days it works. When you're prospecting. Looking for fish. Some days just have to break it down and go to the dark side.
tired of this already. I didn't come here to get rained on. I came here to get fished on. <laughs> <laughs>